Hadley, good morning again. Well, I'm in Suez, Egypt, where salvage teams have been able to partially free the Ever Given in the Suez Canal this morning, at least according to Maritime Services provider Inchscape. Now, exact details are still emerging here, but this is a breakthrough for rescue operators who have been attempting to free this vessel, blocking the Suez Canal for almost a week. Now, as we understand it, Inchscape saying the vessel is now being secured. It's still not clear, though, how soon the waterway is going to be open again to traffic or how long it's going to take to uh, get the Ever Given out with a reported 400 ships now waiting to pass through the canal uh, to uh, get moving again. Now, as you mentioned, we've seen oil prices fall on this news. Of course, oil and LNG make up about 5 to 10 percent of Suez shipments. So news that we'll see ships hopefully passing through the canal again has eased some of the uh, pressure that we've seen on oil prices on the upside. Uh, And again, when you look at the situation here, there was some renewed pressure from the uh, Egyptian government yesterday to get this done. Uh, President Sisi just flagging that uh, it would be possible for some of the rescue operators to start unloading uh, containers on board the Ever Given, all 20,000 of them. Uh, That would be a worst case scenario. And it looks like uh, rescue operators have been able to avoid that. Uh, At the same time, there was good progress across the weekend too. Uh, Dredgers using highly specialised equipment were able to pump out um, sand and clay from underneath the ship. And we've seen uh, more than a dozen tugboats also on hand to help to get the tanker free. But this really turns to the question of how did this happen? And an investigation into how the ship came to be stuck is also underway. In the next couple of hours, we're going to be hearing from Egyptian officials and representatives of the Suez Canal Authority. They plan to hold a press briefing later today. And they're going to be asked exactly what caused this. Was it high winds? Was it pilot error? Was it speed? Was it a systems failure? A combination of those factors that led to this crisis that has ultimately put world trade, at least seaborne world trade, to a complete standstill for almost a week.